recognition again. So we're very, very lucky to have such a distinguished member of our community. So Stephanie, thank you for uh, chairing. And let's move to the testing session. Thank you. And I would like to say I'm honored to be able to chair the Haskell Symposium first session. And this first session, we're going to be talking about testing. So our first speaker <laughs> is uh, Rudy Bracca, and he will tell us about FitSpec. Yeah. Hello, so everyone hear me? Okay. Uh, so, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Rudy, and this is joint work with Colin Rensman. And so, in the context of property based testing, say a quick check, for example, uh, Fitspec is a tool providing automated assistance in the task of refining property sets for functional testing. Uh, what's the motivation behind it? Let's first talk a little bit and review what is property-based testing. We have a bunch of properties, and here in this example we have three properties describing the function sort, and we pass those properties to quick check, for example, or small check, or feed, or any other property-based testing tool, and quick check will test random inputs to the arguments of these properties. And if the test pass, it will report that the test pass, and that's okay. And if the tests fail, it will, report, it will report which property failed and which, uh, f f uh, which arguments to these properties uh, uh, make it fail. And for those who don't know property-based testing, property-based testing can be seen as parameterized unit testing, like unit tests with parameters. Okay, so now that we have that in our mind, we, uh, so far so good, but uh, two questions uh, uh, remain unanswered. Uh, is the set of properties complete? In other words, no other set of functions passes the tests, and um, that, that we, in, in, uh, in other words, uh, we want to know how restrictive is our property set. Another question that, that might arise when you're using property-based testing, is this property set minimal? Uh, is there a property that is redundant? Uh, can I take off one of the properties when doing regression tests for a speed up or to make my, te my, my, my the test file easier to maintain? Okay, let's, before we get into, in, into, into uh, how the tool works, let's go into some definitions and some examples of the, those definitions. Uh, and these, uh, 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 the, the definitions of minimality and completeness. Let's try to, to define it better. Okay. So, a set of properties is specifying a set of types and distinctly named functions is complete if no other binding of functional values to these names with the same types satisfies all properties. Okay, uh, perhaps that wasn't clear enough, so let's see an example. And as an example, I choose a very simple function to test, which is the Boolean function not that takes a Boolean value and negates it. Let's try to test it and, um, and, and see if it works. And we have a, here is a specification of this function not, which is incomplete. And it says that given a Boolean value p, not not p equals p. And why is this incomplete? Can someone tell? Uh, well, yeah, uh, he's, uh, you're, you're right. Uh, he said that the id function follows these properties. If we take out not, and put id in the place of not, it will still follow the properties. So something's missing from the specification. And here it is, our function not prime, which is actually id <laughs> over booleans, uh, is different from not, but follows the proper property one. Now let's see an example of a complete specification of, of not. Here's an example. Uh, uh, here's the specification, not not p equals p, not true equals false, and this is a complete specification of not, only the function not follows it. Note that although there are different implementations of the function not, all are semantically equivalent. These are just two different ways of implementing the function. Okay, let's now define equivalence. Two sets of properties for similar, similarly named and typed functions are equivalent if the sets of functional value bindings satisfying them are the same. Let's see an example to make this clear. Example. Inequivalent specifications of not. 
Here, are, here is two uh, property sets, imagine those are separate entities, and they are inequivalent in, reg in regards to specifying not, because the set of functions satisfying the, them are different. Here's a, a witness of that. This function here, not true equals false, and not false equals false, follows the first property, but does not satisfy the second. So that's why those are different uh, uh, specifications. And now into an example of an equivalent, uh, uh, equivalent specifications of not. Those two, despite being different, they are written different, differently. The second property uh, you can see here is different. The first one is not true equals false. And the, uh, the, 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 this one here is not false equals true. Um, but they are equivalent because only the standard function not, not true equals false, not false equals true, satisfies them. On to the last definition, a set of properties for a set, set of typed and distinctly named functions is minimal if none of its properties subsets is equivalent to it. Let's see an example. Uh, example, non-minimal specification of not. This is not a minimal specification of not. Can someone tell me why? Is exactly. The last property uh, is implied by the two first properties. So we can take out property three and we'll still have the same specification. So this is not a non-minimal specification because we have an, a, a, a property that is redundant. And just properties one and two completely specify not. So we can take three out. That, that was what, what I was saying. Um, let's see an example of a minimal specification. And you can guess the minimal specification of not is this one, a property one, property two, and, and this is uh, minimal, because why this is, mi this is minimal? Just to see if... It's not yeah, it's not redundant. If, if I take one property out, uh, we change the specification. The specification becomes less, less restrictive. Uh, so alone, properties one or two alone are not complete specifications of not, and this is a complete specification of not, uh, and indeed a minimal and complete specification of not. Okay, so... Now back to the main contribution. Now that we have defined a minimal and complete clearly, uh, let's say what Fixpack does. Fixpack guides refinements towards a minimal and complete set of test properties. How does it work? In summary, it tests mutant variations of the functions on the test. Those mutants are black box. No code is actually mutated. We, do, we don't actually change the source code of the function. They are black box. And we, we modify a few input-output bindings. And those mutants are enumerated. We enumerate those. And details are given on the paper. And based on the test results of these enumerated mutants, black box mutants, Fitzpack reports surviving mutants, the mutants that pass the tests, but are different from the original function, and conjectures. Surviving mutants will guide completion uh, by prompting us to add a property, and conjectures will guide minimization, prompting us to remove a property, if we believe the conjecture is true, of course. Now, a simple example, specifying the function sort. And this is the take-home uh, message, this is the takeaway message. Uh, please look at me for the, for the next 60 seconds and you'll see the true working. I, I, I think you will like it if you like quick check and things like that. So simple example, specifying the function sort. Here are the three properties that we had in the introduction uh, of, of the, this, this talk. Uh, uh, a sorted list must be ordered. The length of a sorted list must not change in relation to the original list, and the elements should not change in relation to the original list as well. And is this minimal, complete, uh, are we missing something? What do we do? Uh, how do we know? Well, we can pass them to Fitzpac. Pass them to Fitzpac, Fitzpac does, does the tests and reports. Is an apparent, because since it's based on testing, it, 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 it can only conjecture things, it's an apparent, Minimal, but incomplete specification. Why is it incomplete? Well, it says here that of the mutancy test, there are three survivors, three mutants pass the tests. And the smallest one is reported here. And you might be thinking, hmm, but this is a wrong implementation of, of sort. 
Oh, yeah, this is a wrong implementation of sort, but it still passes the tests. Uh, just going through this, uh, in one specific case, this function sort prime sorts the list 0, 0, 1 to the list 0, 1, 1, and that's wrong, right? Uh, and the, in all other cases, sorts normally the sort, part, the sort prime function, function. And it indeed follows the, the, the properties. Uh, the resulting list is ordered, it length didn't change, and the membership of elements did not change. And we should, what, what should we do now? We have this, this survive mutant. Uh, what should we do? Should add a proper, hmm? Uh, oh yeah, replace or augment the last property. And which property should we, do you think we should add? Anyone have any? <laughs> That's a good one, yeah, yeah. He said, <laughs> sort 011 is not equal to 011. But it, well, uh, let's be a little, uh, 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 a little more, more generic in our, in our properties and add a property that's saying that the counts of elements do not change. So counting a specific element should not change uh, to the, the, or in, in relation to the original and resulting lists. And okay, we now have four, pro four properties. We, we, we refined it and make, ma made it stronger. What do we do now? Uh, are we done? Well, why don't we pass it to fits back again? What will it report? Let's see. It's an apparent complete specification, but not minimal. There, is a prop there, there are properties that are redundant. And you can guess that, uh, so there are zero survivors, 100% were killed by the property set. And it reports here that the minimal property subset, the subset in this case, uh, it's just properties one and four. And it says why here with a conjecture. It says that property four implies properties two and three. And this is a conjecture, of course, we have to check it ourselves. And if you look closely, yeah, if the counts do not change, and then the elements will not change because it's, and the, the length will also not change because you can always test for all possible elements that are in the list. Yeah, so we can remove those two properties. And we arrive at an apparent minimal and complete specification. And indeed, this is a minimal and complete specification. A, a, a sort function si is simply a, a, an ordered perm permutation of the, the original list. OK. So uh, you might be thinking, hmm, but sorting is easy. It's a simple function. It's, it's, uh, it's just lists and just one argument and one result. And it's simple enough. It's easy to test. Let's try with a not so simple example. Uh, paths on directed graphs. So let's try to specify the graph library. We have this digraph uh, data type, which is represented by, uh, uh, it has a parametric node labels, and it is represented by a list of pairs where the first element of the pair is the source node, and the second element of the pair are the destination nodes of the source node, uh, that are the, the, the successors. And there are those two functions in the, in, in the digraph library, which is isNode and successors. isNode takes a, a, a node identifier, a digraph, and returns whether that's a node in the graph. And successors uh, take a node, a digraph, and return the success successors of that node. And for the, the purpose of this example, we will trust that these functions work. We have tested them. We know that they work. We trust them. And we will try to specify this function, isPath, using those other two functions. And each path uh, takes two node identifiers, a digraph, and returns a Boolean, whether there is a path between those two nodes. Note the difference between a path and an edge. An edge is a direct connection, and a path is might hop between different nodes. And OK, let's try to specify each path. So we could start from an empty property set, no properties at all, and let uh, fits back guide the creation of the very first property. It, it, all mutants would, would, would pass, and it would report the smallest one, a very simple one, and we would try to kill it with some generic property. But since we, we don't have time for that in, in this talk, let's start with a very simple uh, 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 property set 
imagine us, ourselves as a programmer trying to specify this function this path and we come up with, with the, those three properties and we want to know whether they are good enough for, for testing uh, 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 each path. Properties are, uh, if there is a path from a node to itself in the graph, that's the same thing as checking if the node is in the graph because uh, if a node is in the graph, the, I just stay there and that's a path, uh, an empty path. The second property says that if there is a path between two nodes in the graph, then those two nodes must be in the graph. It's simple enough, which we can believe that. And the third property is just transitivity of this path. Path between one and two and two and three, then implies a path between one and three. Okay, let's put those properties up there. Uh, I don't expect you to read them much, but let's put them there uh, uh, in the small font. And what FitSpec will report as a surviving mutant to this uh, 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 specification of this path? It will report this. It's an ispath path function that in all cases, in most cases, return the correct ispath result. But in one specific case, returns it, it, it wrong. But then look at the, at the code, you can look here. This function lies to us and tells that there is a path from zero to one in the graph zero disconnected to one. And there's no path there. And that's wrong, and we should kill this mutant. We should add a property that doesn't allow this. Otherwise, uh, our specification is, is, is weak. Can someone guess which property we could add? Is it the problem the fact that your property number two isn't specified correctly? Mm, so, sorry? Your second property isn't a valid specification of a path. But you're just saying that two nodes exist. Uh, but that's a test on path. Uh, uh, I'm, 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 if there is a path, uh, those two nodes are there, so, so it's, a, it's a test on path. So it, it actually tests something. Okay, so to, to let's add a property to kill it, and the property I choose to put on the slides is property for, uh, this property four here, which simply ch tells us that if there is a path between two nodes in a digraph and those two nodes are different, then in one of the successors of the source node, there must be a, a, a a path to the de destination of the, of the path. So it will kill this mutant because there are no successors of zero and there's no way this mutant could validate this property. It would fail. Okay, let's put it there. Now we have four properties. One, two, three, which I've elided in the slide and property four, which, is, which I just described to you. Let's run Fitzpack again. What it will report? It will report that it's incomplete and that there's a surviving mutant. And the surviving mutant is this one here. There is a path from zero to one in the digraph zero loop and one. And uh, this follows properties one, two, and three. And especially and particularly, it follows property four. You can, you might, hmm, it doesn't seem like, but if you, if you put this path prime there, up there, we, you see that, that it, it, it does indeed uh, follow the properties. Uh, uh, there is a path, if, if I put the graph and the, the, the path there, it will enter in the implication and it will check the successors of zero and the, successors of, uh, the su successor of zero is zero and zero has a path to one according to its path prime. So it, it indeed follows the properties and we, we should kill it uh, with a property, but we won't be doing that in this talk. If you want more, you can see the full story on the paper. There, FitzPack uh, fits is applied to is path and subgraph. So FitzPack is applied to a tuple of functions and it does work, work while, while doing it. And those are the functions it applies. Path has shown you and subgraph returns a restricted version of the graph uh, to some nodes. Okay, let's wrap up. Uh, I'll show you some related work very quickly. Uh, there's a nice lightning talk that was presented at, at Haskell Implementers Workshop of 2014 by Yunus Duregord. And the title of the talk, the lightning talk, which is a five minute talk, uh, it's ultra lightweight black box mutation testing. And it, it, it inspired uh, me and Colin to work with black box mutation testing. And it's very cool, you should check it out. 
Uh, those who couldn't get a QR code can ask me later at the link, the link or the, uh, search for it. And so another related work is MuCheck, which is a syntactic mutation testing tool for Haskell, a classic mutation testing where you change the code. And for example, here, if you have a function sort, it mutates greater than or equal to greater than. And while as feedback is semantic, it just treats it, uh, treats it uh, as black box. There's also QuickSpec from, from the guys at Chalmers. And it takes a set of, set of functions to describe. Uh, and QuickSpec takes those and generates a, a, an equational specification automatically. And we can pass this equational specification to FitSpec to get a refined equational specification. Hmm, I don't think that would work. Well, you can check the paper. There is more there. So for further comparison with MuCheck and QuickSpec, uh, you can check the paper. Section 6, page 11. OK, summary. In summary, FitSpec is a tool that guides refinements of properties. Survivors guide completion by prompting us to add a property. Conjectures guide minimization by prompting us to remove a property. Uh, it's shown effective in small case studies. Uh, it uses enumerative testing both to generate the test cases and the mutants. Uh, as future work, uh, there we could try alternative mutation techniques. And you can try it. Just come on install or access the GitHub page. Thank you very much. OK, we have time for some questions. Um, do we have This was very cool. Thanks, um, thanks. I'm happy that you liked it. Have you thought about um, if you know that a function is a fixed point, then you could try mutating the thing inside the fix rather than the entire function? That would be a very, very slightly gray box. Mm, yeah, yeah. It, it would be an interesting idea, yeah. That, 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 that would be interesting. And something came, some mutant in the paper came up that we couldn't generate, that uh, we, we knew that there was a mutant that could survive, but we couldn't generate because of our method was lim our limitations in the method. So by making it a bit gray box, we could, we could definitely generate it. So that's a, a good path for investigation. Yeah. One of the interesting things about QuickSpec and indeed about many specifications of libraries is that they're really all to do with properties that uh, collections of functions have, you know, so uh, I don't know, concat of reverse of x, mm -hmm. the reverse of concat or something. Yeah. So you've emphasized finding the spec of one function and whether it, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, using some auxiliary yeah. functions and you said, oh, we're going to trust those ones. If you've got, you know, 10 functions and you just want yeah. to have their interacting properties, then does this, does this, does it, I, I, my brain is too small to accommodate this. Uh, Does that still, can you do something fit specy for that? Uh, yes, uh, we can. And uh, it's uh, mutating tuples, which is uh, here. Oh. So uh, fit spec actually can mutate tuples of functions. So it treats uh, uh, functions uh, as uh, like a collection of functions as a tuple and mutates uh, them in conjunction. So it generates mutants that only one of those are muta is mutated and generates mutants where two of those or three of those is mutated. Here's an example that uh, we have this pro four proper Boolean properties. So it's a very simple example, but illustrates it. And the surviving mutant pair is uh, the identity function and the or function, uh, like it mutates and here to, to become the function or by making it true. And it follows the properties. If you put ID there and or, it will work out. So, and the feedback can generate this, this, this kinds of mutants. And yeah. Uh -huh. And then you, you find this, this is the only tuple of functions that would mm -hmm. satisfy. And you find that there's a, this is the only tuple of functions that would satisfy those properties. Uh, in this case, yes, it, it is the only tuple of functions that will satisfy this property. That might be uh, over tight. That might mm -hmm. be tighter than you want. Maybe many tuples of functions would do, provided they had those properties. That's all your external stuff needs. Uh, well, it ha they have to be of the same type. So, yeah. so uh, in, in this case of booleans, I, I think this is the the, the only uh, 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 yeah, in this pair case. of. Hmm? In this case, yeah. In this but case, maybe in, this in some case. cases, there could be uh, a variety of implementations yeah. to satisfy the properties, and that's all that the external client needs. So, to find a, a precisely, a uniquely specify a function might be over tight. Oh yeah, it it, it will be over tight certainly, but uh, uh, 
the, the process of refinement, refinements with, with FITSPAC, it's, it's kind of scalable in the sense that you can uh, do small steps towards the, the, the minimum and complete specification, but you can decide to, oh, I, I don't want to, to go there anymore. I, I have improved it enough and maybe later I'll, 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 I'll do more or I'll try with, uh, with another tool, but it, it, you, you can uh, uh, do it halfway. It's, 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 a, it's an interactive proce process. This seems like it might have some applications towards uh, program synthesis. Have you looked at that or? Um, well, yeah, yes, it could. I, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure because the, the, the technique I use to 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 mutate those functions is pretty simple. It's, they, they are black box, so it's it's basically a pattern match cases. So it's it's very limited. So it's there. There's not that much you you could do. In, with, with regards to, to, to like getting some, some intelligent function that is something very, very complicated from FITSPAC is, 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 is more toward that. But you could use MuCheck or, or another, another tool that is a more uh, complicated way of mutating mutants that, uh, that maybe could, could do that. But I don't think... Uh, uh, No, it won't introduce recursion, yeah. It well, you could bolt this on after a program synthesis in order to guide uh, refinements of the properties that the programmer needs to be supplying. Mm, uh, do, what, what do you mean? Sorry, uh, I didn't so get that. If I've given to my program synthesis tool uh, a set of properties that I want it to satisfy, mm -hmm. um, those properties may be underspecified. And the synthesis tool could come back with a few candidates Mm -hmm. and then throw those candidates through this mutation oh. system, and you have some nice minimal examples to tell the user, okay, I don't know which function you want because I want... Yeah, that's actually... Oh, oh, yeah, now, now I, I understand what we were meaning. You're right, and that, that is a pretty cool application for the tool, and um, that's very interesting. We can talk, talk afterwards about, it, about this. That's, that's pretty cool. Okay, one last question. Uh, I can think of two ways to write the identity function on Boolean. One of them is what you call not prime on the slide right there, and the other one is lambda x x. Um, can oh. your tool distinguish those? Uh, I, 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 I undefined, you, then it'll have different behavior. Uh, you 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 can you can. Uh, well, it, it, they, they actually would have uh, uh, they, they would have the same behavior. So, in a sense, they are the same function. They are the same implementation. They are different implementations of the same function. That so would be, that would be true in ML, for instance. But in Haskell, we have laziness. So I can, if I pass in a bottom, then they'll they'll differ. Actually. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, so. Um, in FITSPAC, we do not we, we do not treat uh, do a special treatment of laziness. We we only care about functions that are that we do, we don't care about uh, uh, bottom and things like that. We don't try to to refine specifications about bottom. Oh, okay. So that that that's a, a limitation of the tool. Yeah. Thanks. You're right. Okay. Let's thank Rudy again. Thank you.